here's what we're going to do today. Um, today, uh, actually, um, I'm going to we're, we're going to um, enhance what we were doing before, and we'll spend a few minutes talking about what we're going to do, and then we'll spend a few more minutes talking about how we're going to do it, and then we'll actually do it. All right. Um, I'm going to build this from scratch. All right. I, I think that. Um, it benefits you seeing the process over and over and over again, all right? Because again, you know, I know this doesn't all necessarily sink in just by seeing it once or twice or whatever. So, um, you know, I, I could take what we have done on Tuesday, or yeah, Tuesday, and alter it. Um, but we're not, all right? We're gonna we're gonna do one from scratch in, in, instead. Um, so let's talk about what we want to do, and this is very relevant as far as your next assignment. Um, we've written a page that queries a database and displays rows from the database. I think we did it both for students and faculty so that we have our data set, or data source rather, um, we have our grid view, and we bind them together. And the data source has associated with it a connection string that connects it to our database. All right. And it also has a SQL statement that um, is used to retrieve this information. Now, if you think about it for a second, you know, is there someone on re in the records department right now calling up a page that's going to display every single student on it? Not likely, right? Um, instead, what you're likely to have is to have someone ask for a certain student, ask for a specific student. And you could probably ask for a student a couple different ways. You can type in their student number, for example, maybe phone number, or name, right? You could do several one of those things. Um, what we're going to do, uh, same thing with faculty, you know, doesn't really give you a lot of benefit. Like let's say if you need to know Huffman's email address, right, and you come to a page that has all 100 faculty members on it. I guess you could scan through, but it would be nice if you just instead could just type in the name or part of the name even, you know, and, uh, and uh, get, uh, get that, that person's information. Um, you know, I've had people that have, after having me for a semester on the evaluation, put in the wrong name for me. All right. Uh, I had someone this semester uh, ask me how I was doing, Professor Zimmerman. All right. People usually get the Z right. I'll give them that. All right. Uh, plus, people tend to misspell my name. They'll either make it A R S or they'll forget the S on the end. So it's nice to be able to do an approximate match on the name. In other words, well, yeah, I want I want the email address of that computer teacher I had, then their name starts with a Z, and I don't remember exactly what it is. Well, it'd be nice if you could just put in part of the name and have it find it. So that's our goal. We're going to take the faculty table, all right, and we are going to have a box up here where we can put in the name or part of the name, all right. And then we'll click search. And then the results will return only people whose name matches um, the string that we typed in. In fact, to clarify that a bit, only people whose name, who, who, who started the name matches the string that, that put in. So in other words, if you type in, uh, if you type in, uh, D.O., it'll match Donahue, but not match McDonald. All right, so it, it, the, the string that we type in has to match the first part of the name. We can do it the other way, all right? In fact, if we were searching, let's say, for the title of a book, all right, we might want to do it so that we find the string anywhere in the title. If we're looking for a book, 
you know, gee, I remember that book, uh, was it called, uh, you know, CSS, how to use it, or how to use CSS? Gee, I don't remember, but it has CSS in the title, all right? Then I might be able to want to, to one match anywhere in the, in the string. But for names, it seems to make sense that we're going to look for strings that begin with that name. So we're going to do that. And we're going to click search, and up on the screen is going to appear, um, you know, a couple pieces of information about the faculty. Faculty first name, faculty last name, and the faculty rank. Now that faculty rank comes from another table, right? There's a rank code in the, uh, in the faculty table that has some unfortunate values in it. For example, an associate professor is, has a code of ASSO. All right, I don't know who thought of that one. It wasn't me, all right. But um, we don't want to see that and, and give people the giggles when they see that. So we want to pull out the full word associate. We want to pull out the full word, uh, you know, adjunct or whatever. So we want to display the full description of the rank as opposed to the rank code. All right, that's screen one that we're going to do. That's step one that we're going to do today. Step two, then, is we're going to make something on here a link. All right, maybe last name, maybe first name, I don't know. We'll make that a link. All right, so their last name will be a link, and when we click on that link, up will come a page that has all the information about that faculty person, including a photo. Chance for me to do my art here. Hair is usually a mess. I realize the beard isn't black, but you know, you got to do what you can. So, that's the two things that we're going to do today. All right, so this is some new stuff, but interestingly enough, it's not as new as much new stuff as you might think. All right, so let's review. Page with a search. The page is going to display only those faculty people whose last name matches, whose first part of their last name matches the string that we put in here as opposed to everyone. We're going to display the rank description instead of the rank uh, code. Click on the last name. We're going to pull up a details page that has everything about that faculty member, maybe even the students that that faculty member advises. All right. So let's talk about this. All right. And let's, let's quote, design this. And again, remember, design means different things depending on the context, right? Design could mean, you know, how we're going to make the pages look. All right, that's an aspect of the design. And we're not terribly concerned about that today. All right, we're just going to make some bare bones example. Um, if you work for a large organization, uh, I was talking about this a little bit in my yesterday class. Uh, I think yesterday. If you work for a larger organization, like a lot of the projects I worked on that required server-side coding, we had some HTML, CSS design gurus develop the layout of the pages as static pages. In other words, they would go in and create the HTML and CSS and get the right look and appearance of it, but because they didn't know anything about databases and scripting and that sort of thing, um, they would hard code the data in. So they might hard code a list in, just a sample output, and hard code uh, a professor detail page. One nice thing about that is that provides you pretty quick and dirty a prototype that you could show people, right? If I was doing this, let's say, for LCC, all right, um, it's one thing to talk about drawings and mock-ups and all that. It's another thing to actually put sort of a model in people's hands of the database and say, this is how it's going to look. 
then people are much more creative. You know, a lot of times when you give people a blank sheet of paper and say, what do you want your page to look like? What do you want the site to look like? A lot of times that's kind of overwhelming for a lot of people, you know? Um, like, for example, if someone were to ask me, what is your ideal house? You know, if you could have any house in the world, what would it be? I don't know if I know where to begin, all right? But if you showed me three or four houses, you know, three or four mansions or something like that, I could say, you know what? I like the outside styling of this one, but I like the fact that this one has an indoor basketball court. And I like the fact that this one comes with a, a live-in chef that's going to be on call 24 hours a day to make me snacks and all that sort of thing, right? It's easy to look at something and to provide feedback sometimes than to, to come up with an original idea given a blank slate. So the bottom line is, Design in this case would mean the layout of the page, but that's only part of it. And that's the part we're not worrying about today. We're not worried about that aspect of design. The aspect of design we are worried about is what objects we're going to need to do this. Remember that when you use a framework like this, a lot of your job isn't necessarily writing new stuff of your own. Instead, your job is assembling components and configuring the components to do the job. So, let's take inventory of what we need. All right? We need a web form and another web form. All right? On this web form, what objects do we need? Text box. Text box. button. You guys are cherry picking. It's okay. A grid. a grid view. Yeah, that's actually part of the grid. Need one more. The, the data source, right. So this is what we need. Now, the data source is going to need a connection string. All right, and that connection string is going to get stuffed into the web config file, which is just how we want it because we don't want this one to have a different data string than that or connection string than that one, right? So we're going to want to save that connection string in the web config file. Now, let's look at this SQL statement here. All right, let me put up part of the tables here. We have a faculty table that has. faculty ID, primary key, first name, last name, and a faculty rank. That's really all that's relevant for this page. All right. And there's a faculty rank table that is going to have a faculty rank as a primary key and the description. And that's what we want to display. What's our select statement going to look like? To pull up, first of all, what would our select statement be to pull up everyone and the description of their rank? Select star, faculty. Okay, well, we want to pull up everyone. We don't want to necessarily pull up on this one every attribute. So we would say select. FID, remember you always want the key, or most always, and we'll definitely see why in this example. Faculty first name, faculty last name, and then from this table we want the faculty rank description. From faculty F rank, right? Those are the two tables involved. And then we need to match up the faculty table with the faculty rank table. So we'll say where faculty 
dot f rank equals f rank dot f rank. All right. Now, that will return every faculty person with their first name, last name, and the description of their rank. But that's not what we need to do, right? We need to pull up only certain faculty people. So how are we going to alter that SQL statement to pull up only certain people? Like. Okay. You, you said the word like. We will use a like in this statement, so that's true. Like. Pardon me? She's by. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we will add on to the where clause. We won't use by in this case. We, we, we could order by something, but again, we're going to use, we're going to add on to the where clause. Remember, what's the where clause responsible for? It's responsible for matching up tables, and it's responsible for filtering or limiting your output. Now, in this case, he said the word like. We're going we're gonna to say something like, and let me write it up here, faculty last name like something as opposed to equal something. What's the difference between like and equal? Like does what? Like does the approximate match. All right. If I were to say, for example, where FL name like H or yeah, where um, Or FL name like, let me write this clear, HU percentage sign. <coughs> it would find everyone whose name started with HU. If I said equals that, it's only going to return people whose last name is HU percentage sign, which probably isn't a lot of people. All right, the percentage sign, by the way, is what is standard used in SQL as the wild card. All right? This causes a touch of confusion because in Access, in their attempt to make Access a little more user-friendly for your, your average person out there, or your less technical oriented, they use the asterisk as a wild card. All right? Whereas in standard SQL, it's a percentage sign. So because we're going through that SQL connection, we need to use the, um, the uh, percentage sign. And will that bring back multiple or just one? No, it'll bring back multiple. It'll bring back everyone who matches that. So if there was Huffman and Hughes, for example, it would bring back both of them. So I know there's wild cards that I think like Star will get you everything. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, in other words, like, it would pick up Hug and Hum, but not Hughes. Right. Yeah. Um, I know there are wildcards for that in the operating system. I'm trying to remember if there's wildcards like that in SQL. I don't recall off the top of my head. You rarely use those. You know, usually you're, you're looking for something like this. Again, if I wanted the HU anywhere in there, instead of... HU percentage, I do percentage HU percentage. Then it would match Hoffman and Donahue, for example. Now, the problem is, is we're not always looking for Don Huffman. All right? We're not always looking for people whose name starts with HU. We're looking for people whose name starts with something different every time, potentially. Where do we get the name that we're looking for? We get it from the text box. All right. So what our SQL statement is going to have to say is where faculty f rank equals f rank dot f rank and again the connect where clauses you can use an and or or in this case and is appropriate because we want both of them to be true and f l name like, and somehow we're going to have to 
put in the name of the text box plus a percent sign. And we'll see how to do that. Um, how, exactly how to do that. But somehow, we're going to have to make the where clause, instead of being hard coded to HU or ZE or whatever, where FL name equals something plus a percent sign. All right, enough designing for now. All right. We'll come back to uh, the second part after we code this part. All right. Um, I will note that I'm making sure that I put this FID in the select statement because I'm definitely going to need the FID when I go to the details page. When I click that, when I create the link to go to the details page. So even though this page doesn't display the FID, and you could say, well. You know, you don't really need it on this page. If that's all we were going to do is this page, you're right. We don't need the FID. However, I know we're going to do that. So just as a spoiler alert, all right, we're choosing the FID because that's going to help us go from this page to that page. All right, on to coding. Studio, and I will create my application. Pick an empty website, again, because we don't want any of that clutter in there. I will put it on a desktop. And I'll call it, um, again, I'll call it school. Yep, I want to create that folder. Okay, go ahead and make it. Now, you notice at this point, because we chose to create an empty website, we have the folder out there for our website, which I typically call an application. Right? If you were to view this on a web server perspective, it would say web application for it. If I open it up, I see there's my web config file. Here is where I'm going to create my app data folder. All right? So I'll go and I'll create my app data folder and I'll drag in my database there. Again, that's sort of a security thing to make sure that um, we don't have any issues with, with people trying to hit our database in unauthorized ways. When I do that, it still doesn't show up in my Solution Explorer until I hit refresh and then my app data shows there. So, that's a sign that I'm good to go. All right, so let's go and build our uh, page. So we'll go to New, Open File, Web Form. Text box. 
and my button. And my grid view. I'll pause for a minute and before we do the data set to do some cleanup work. Um, you know, I'm going to practice what I preach. I'm going to call these things good names. So I'll call this text box name because that's where we're putting in the name or part of a name. I'll call this button button search. And I'll change the text of it even to say search. Now you're just doing the oh. last name search, correct? Yes. Okay. I was pointing at the wrong object when I typed that in. There we go. Search. And the, the rest of the control will, uh, or the, the grid will configure in, in a minute here. So let's go and let's create our data set, our data source. So I'll go and pick a SQL data source, drag it on over, configure data source. Because it's the first time, we want to create a new connection string. And because I've moved that app data folder over and hit refresh and all that, in the dropdown will be my database. If it's not in there, I don't know, maybe you didn't move it in the right place, maybe you didn't hit refresh afterwards, but it should be there and you should pick it. Doing this again guarantees that you've done it the right way because it will put the app's data directory in there um, as opposed to hard coding in the path to it. You don't want to have hard coded paths in this. All right. It'll ask me if I want to save it, and I will save it because I want to use it later. <coughs> now, I'm going to go in and I'm going to put my own SQL statement. Notice how I'm oblivious to the fact that we could probably go and use a GUI tool to do this. All right. GUIs. When I was a kid, we didn't have GUIs. We had punch cards when I was a kid. All right. Pardon me? DOS, yeah. Well, Unix, actually, but. Did you have to walk uphill both ways to get to the computer room? <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Uh, but we didn't have a computer room. It was, it was actually outside uh, in the snow and rain. Uh, constantly. In the basement. In, in the basement. And it was rocks, yeah, on the path. With all the snakes. And broken like glass and snakes, yeah. Wasn't everything always in the basement? Um, yeah, I think it was. You know, I'm trying to remember where the computer room I remember where the computer room was in high school better than I remember where it was in college. I don't know what that tells you. But anyhow. All right. Let's write our select statement in. Select. And I will copy this into Notepad so we can see it better. FF name. Well, FID, first of all. Now, we don't have to display that ID, but we do want it in the data source so that we can do other things with it. FF name, FL name, and Frank Desk from faculty F rank where faculty dot frank equals frank desk dot frank. Now again, you know, if you're using a database for and that you're not terribly familiar with, you know, by all means have a copy of it open in access or whatever tool so you can refer to the column names. I've just done this example or similar examples a million times, so I remember all the names of the tables and the columns. All right, so uh, again, there's no magic here. I just, I've just done this enough times. Now, that's part of the where clause. That's the part of the where clause that connects the, the two tables together. Now we want to put in the part of the where clause that's going to filter out based on name. And if we knew for sure that we were always searching for Huffman, we could do something like this. And if L name like H-U 
percentage sign. 